Thank you for the introduction. So, good afternoon, everyone. So, I will be presenting a uh, human readable proof of the related key security of CES 128. So, this proof is like 15 pages long, so we'll be ready for it. So, first, I will give an introduction followed by the related key security of ES128 and the new efficient and secure key schedule for ES128 followed by a conclusion. So, as you all know, ES has, is a 1 to 8 bit block cipher and it has three variants uh, 1 to 8 bit key size, 192 and 256 key size. And for more than a decade, it has been used worldwide and it still remains secure. So one of the main features is because the 8-bit S-Box has strong differential and linear property, and also the combination of the shift row and mixed column ensure that there's at least 25 active S-Boxes in four rounds of AES under the single key model. So together, AES provides strong resistance against classical differential and linear data analysis. So that is for the single key model. In the related key model, the attacker is allowed to insert difference in the, both the plain text and the key. So you, it is much harder to defend against related key differential crypto analysis. And AES192 and 256 has shown vulnerability in related key attacks. So, and to analyze the related key differential bound is quite complicated because of the interaction between the key, key schedule and the internal state. And since the resistance against differential crypto analysis is directly related to the number of active S boxes, a natural question to ask is what is the minimum number of active S boxes in the AES128 for the related key model? So, Naturally, there is already a lot of uh, computer-aided tools to help you calculate the bounds, but there are a few draw drawbacks for this kind of computer tool. So first, you have to review the code and trust the implementation of the program. And it doesn't give you any meaningful information on how the key schedule and the internal state actually interact with each other. And most importantly, it doesn't give us any uh, information on how to design a good and better key schedule. So this motivates us to work on this and we present the first human readable proof for the minimum number of active S-boxes for 1 to 4 rounds of EES 1 to 8 in the related key model without any computational help. And from this proof, we gain an insight on how we can actually design the key schedule to have a better related key differential bound. So now I'll just give a brief description on AES. Probably everyone are quite familiar with this, so I will briefly talk about it. So the internal state is arranged into 4x4 internal state S, where each byte, each cell is a byte. And similarly for the 1 to 8 bit key is arranged into a 4x4 key state K. And for the convenience of our discussion, uh, we will give this notation the vertical line J to indicate is the J row of the state for the internal state and similarly for the key state. So from left to right, you have the first column, second column, third column, and fourth column. And for one round of AES, we start with the and round key function, which is a byte-wise byte XOR of the key state Ki with the internal state Ki minus 1 prime to produce Si. And then this Ki is updated by the key schedule, which I will mention it in a while. In a while. And you will produce the next key state Ki plus 1. And for the internal state round, you will start with the sub byte. So every byte will be, uh, S box will be applied to every byte. And this is where we count the number of active S boxes. So if there is a non zero difference in SI, then you will have an uh, active S box in this. And for the shift row, it's just a shift row, you just shift the position of the 
differences. And for the mixed column, it is updated through a multiplication of an MDS matrix. So here I will not give the formula definition, but all we need to know is this MDS property ensures that the number of active, uh, the number of differences before and after the mixed column is either zero, so in this case there is no difference to begin with, or there is at least five differences uh, when you sum the difference before and after the mixed column. And after this uh, mixed column, you will get the output SI prime. And for the key schedule, to get the next key state, first you will take the fourth column, upward rotate by one by, and then apply four S boxes to apply S box to each of the four bytes, and then XOR it with the first column to generate the first column for the next round. And then for the subsequent column, you just XOR the previous column with the column from the previous state. So for the related key security of PS128. So our bound are in line with the computer search bound. We managed to prove that for one to four round there are zero, one, three, and nine active Xboxes. And our main contribution is for the four rounds. So for four consecutive rounds of AS128, there are at least nine active Xboxes for the related key differential. And since the proof is like 15 pages long, so I will not be going into the detail of the proof, but just an outline of how the proof is. So how do we count the number of active Xboxes? So we just use this simple formula. So we sum the number of differences in the state S1 to S4, and also the fourth column of each key state, because the fourth column will be upper rotated followed by a followed by the applying the S boxes. So we will count the differences in the fourth column of each key state. So at the beginning of our work, we try to do a divide and conquer method. So we start, we first look at the internal state, and we manage to show that for the internal state, for four consecutive rounds, there's at least five active S boxes. So if for the key state, we have at least four, then the proof is done. Okay, and when we look at the key state, we can show that if the number of active S boxes is less than 3, then we have a total of at least 9 active S boxes. However, for the middle case, where the number of active S boxes in the key state is 3, then we can only achieve at most 8 S boxes. So this is not tied with the computer search bound. And the reason is because the active uh, the difference in the key state are closely intertwined with the differences in the internal state. So we have to study both the internal state and the key schedule concurrently. So for our proof, uh, we start with showing that the internal state has at least five active S boxes, but then we further split into two cases where the bound is tight or it's not. So when the bound is tight, we can further show that because of the different structure in the internal state, there are at least four active S boxes in the key schedule. And then for the case where there are less than three active in the key state, then we can immediately prove that there's at least nine active S boxes. And the remaining case can combine and get at least nine. And this one is tied from the structure use the differential characteristic you see here. So for the first round, there are two active, two, one, and zero active for the internal state. And for the key schedule, only the first key state has four active S boxes. And for the rest of them, there's no differences in the fourth column. So this bound of nine active S boxes is tied for four rounds. So from looking at this, when while doing this proof, we gain an insight of how we can actually design the key schedule to improve the bounds. So we propose a new fully linear key schedule that obtain a higher differential bound for uh, on the number of active S boxes. So our key schedule is quite simple. It's just a byte permutation. 
So for the first row and the fourth row, you will have a big rotation to the right by one position and by two position. And then the entire state is rotated downwards. So for instance, for cell zero, you will rotate to the right by one and then move down by one. So you will be in this position. Okay, so why we design it this way? First, it's efficient and easy to implement because there's no XOR or Xbox in this key schedule now. And because there's no XOR, uh, the attacker is not able to manipulate the number of active Xboxes in the key state to match the internal state. And thirdly, the permutation is chosen in a way that there's a, it's a cycle of 16, meaning that every byte will visit all the position once before returning to the origin, original position. And also, this key schedule will avoid overlapping and cancelling of the active byte in the internal state. So, what do I mean by that? So, uh, consider if the difference actually comes from the key. So, let's say you have some difference at position A is added, introduced into the key state. So, after the one round of AES, you see that the difference will propagate to the entire first column. But because of the byte permutation in the key schedule, the A will be moved to another position that doesn't overlap with this difference. So the difference introduced by the key schedule will not be cancelled in the next round. Similarly for the backward direction. And this also applies to the diagonal. So for instance, if the dis difference is at B, so if you introduce a different at B and then you reverse umbro one round of AES, the active bytes will be in this diagonal B, but it will not overlap with the, where the difference is in the key schedule. So a quick observation is that if the difference comes from the key, then there will be at least six active X forces in the previous or the next two consecutive rounds. Because of the MDS there are at least five active and this difference doesn't cancel any of them, so we will add, add on to the number. And so now I'll give a simple proof, just an idea of it. So for three rounds, for AES128, there are at least three active Xboxes. So the primary goal is to achieve more than three active Xboxes. So how we calculate the Xbox is simply the sum of S1, S2, and S3, because now the key schedule does, does not have any active Xboxes. And I omit the rest of the structure because it uh, has no impact on the proof now. <coughs> so we split into a few subcases. So the first case is if S1 is empty, so there's no difference in S1, then the difference in S2 must come from K2. And from the observation we have before, there will be at least six active S-bosses in S2 and S3. And for another subcase where the middle round, the S2 is empty, then the difference in S1 prime comes from K2, and the difference from S3 comes from K3. So because of the MDS property, there will be at least four. There will be at least four active. Uh, I mean, the total of total number of active S-bosses in S1 and S3 is at least five. And for the last case, if both S1 and S2 are non-zero, there are some difference, then let's look at the simple case where both are 1. Then if S1 has one active byte, then it means after one, one AES, there's a full column of active bytes. And then to achieve one difference in the next round, it means that for the key state, there must be at least three difference in one column to cancel three of them. But because of the key schedule, at least one of these difference will be moved to another column. So you will not overlap with the, the full column here. So there will be at least two difference from this column, and then this shifted position will introduce to another difference. In. So there will be at least three active S boxes in the S3. So therefore, we have a total of at least five active S-bosses for three consecutive rounds.
And so this is our bound for the new key schedule. So from Q1 onwards, we already achieve a better bound. And on top of that, our key schedule does not have any S boxes. So it's like with a total of 16 S boxes, we can achieve a better bound than the ADS we have. A total of 20 S boxes if you consider the four S boxes in the key schedule. So, but also you can uh, improve the bound further by adding a row of S boxes in the key schedule. Because as you see before, every every update will shift the entire state, the key state down by one position. So if you add a row of S boxes, then every four rounds you will guarantee that the active pipe will visit the S box once. So and this bound can be added directly to the bound we see just now. And this will create a dilemma for the attacker. So if you have low number of active S boxes in the key state, then there's a very low chance or very difficult for you to cancel the difference in the internal state. On the other hand, if you have high numbers of active bytes in the key state, key state then because there's no XOR or other oper linear operation, so we can't reduce the number of active S boxes in the key state. So to conclude, we present the first human readable proof for AS128. If you're interested, you can read the proof. And we show that for 1 to 4 rounds, there are at least 0, 1, 3, and 9 active S boxes. And lastly, we propose a new key schedule that is more efficient and provide a higher differential bound. So that's all my talk. Thank you. Questions or comments? I have a question. Um, in this key scheduling, I guess you, you should also, in the new one, huh. you should also have some constants, probably. Oh, yeah, of course. This is just an idea of how we can evolve. <coughs> of course, like, wrong constants should be added. Okay. Okay. I have a question, but I don't have a microphone. Uh, so, you showed the number of active S-boxes for the new key schedule for more than four rounds. Mm -hmm. So, were those... Thank you. Were those found with the proof or with the automated search? Uh, when you compare with the... Like you showed, I don't know, in one of your last slides, uh, like there were the number of active S-boxes for up to, I don't know, maybe eight rounds or... So. Yeah, for, for that we use the computer computer to do the proof. Thank you. But for the low number of rounds, you can have some guarantee that because the bound actually increases exponentially, so if we have a good start, then at the later we have a better bound. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? I have a quick, one quick question. Uh, have you tried your idea to AS128 only? Uh, I mean, uh, how about the folder is one in the little one to fifty six? Uh, yeah, we have not tried that, but because the key schedule is quite different, although it's like an extension, but the basically the lemma that we have for AS one two eight might not apply to AS one ninety two two five six. So we might have to revisit or consider other strategy to do the proof. Thank you very much. So, yeah, there are no other questions. So let's thank the speaker again.